Got a little uh, video here. Uh, you want to hit the lights for me? Your incentive for getting to glass on time. Thank you very much. So this is going to kind of show you how things used to be done and how they're done today. It's called the information revolution. Kind of cool, huh? You want to hit the back lights? So, uh, do we talk? To, yeah, let's hear. This time, I'm feeling lucky by Google. Oh, um, I'm feeling lucky. Well, instead of giving you a list of search results, just take you to the first result, and uh, you no longer really do see it anymore at Google. I'm feeling lucky. Google, like if you just go to search, yeah, you still got I'm feeling lucky, right? I'm feeling stellar. That's interesting. I'm feeling puzzled. I'm feeling stellar. Let's go to I'm feeling stellar. There's stellar. That's kind of fun. I'm feeling trendy. Information about hot searches, who's trendy. But I'm feeling lucky. Well, it used to be that you just type your search here, and it wouldn't automatically go to a page where it'd start giving you results. It would, uh, the first no, it just, you'd still be on the search page, and then you had to say, go find that, right? The technology wasn't quite there to submit your submission and kind of have you maintain state and be connected and required a submission. But now you can just click over here, I'm feeling lucky, and it takes you to the top result for you, for you. When you guys search Google, when I search Google, we're going to get different results. They're called filter bubbles, right? So they tailor the world, the web, to meet you. You know, so if I'm Republican, I'm going to get stuff that leans more to the right. If I'm liberal, I'm going to get things that more lean to the left. Because they don't want to present me with contrarian information because, you know, who wants to have the friend who's always like, nah, -uh, you're wrong. Here's something different. You know, the, I don't know, the, 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 <laughs> the, the warmongers are right. We should all be warmongers. You know, you're going to be like, I don't want to listen to that guy anymore. So if Google is always sending you stuff you didn't want to hear, You'd be like, ah, screw them. They need to find the results that work for you. But at the same time, that kind of limits what you see. That's kind of interesting. So I'm feeling lucky also used to do some funny things, but that's I'm feeling lucky. So information revolution. Was that in here? We talked about the information revolution a little bit. That was my Tuesday, Thursday class, huh? Yeah? All right. So we're, we're uh, one of the concepts I want you guys to get is we're in the middle of an information revolution which is kind of a big change in humanity. We talked about it a little bit last week, kind of the main thing. If you summarize last week, technology is a tool. How do we use it, right? This week we're going to talk a little bit about information revolution and, you know, has there been a previous information revolution? And if we're in the information age, what age were we in before? Where are we coming from? Where are we going to? And can we look to the past to see any kind of, you know, like, hey, did this change it, you know, were there any similar occurrences in our history that could inform us about where we're at? What's up? Uh, last time you wanted somebody to remind you about how they use technology in China. Ah, and then uh, technology in China. Thank you. So that's still on the books. So let me uh, make sure, let me see if I got that video in here. So uh, there's this great website where they have TED Talks. And uh, you can come here to TED.com and it's just people people talking about fascinating stuff. And you can say, hey, show me the most emailed this week, most comments, right, or most popular. So I'm just looking for, you know, already the guy who was talking about China is falling off the list, man. Most viewed, date filmed, let's see if, ah, uh, there we go, Behind the Great Firewall of China. So I'm going to come over here to YouTube, week two, right? And I'm going to search, I can just open a new link, search for that uh, video over here at YouTube. This is my class count. I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to say, hey, add this to the week two playlist. And so we'll watch that probably on Wednesday. So now on my week two playlist, if I refresh this, so you can create playlists in uh, YouTube. And now that video is down here, so it's like, oh, let's watch that on Wednesday. All right, thank you for reminding me about that. All right, so we were looking at how technology is a tool last week, right, and how do we use it? So it could be used for positive and negative, and, and we use it for positive and negative to varying degrees already in our lives, 
right? Are we using it or is it using us? This week we're going to look a little bit at the information revolution, where we've come from, where we are, where we may be going, and uh, maybe start to look at how computers work, and then also get our hands on the computer and start doing some stuff. Okay, so that's kind of what's what's up for this week. Uh, so first thing I want to do is just a little bit of exercise left over from last week. Um, Three, 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 four, three, four, and then you guys right here, why don't you join over with those? So everybody just kind of be with the group that's in your row. And uh, we got two in the back, is that right? No, three, there we go. All right, and uh, what we're going to do is, uh, I want you for a second just to, uh, I guess maybe you want to do it with a pen and piece of paper, or you just want to talk about it, think about it, talk about it. Let's just think about it and talk about it. So think about a way that technology is uh, a positive in your life. All right, so just think about some example, like just for a second, take a second. What's a way that technology, and give a concrete example, right, if you can, come up with a concrete example. The way technology is positive in your life. Will it be easier for you guys if you write this? Yes. All right, get a pen, pen piece of paper out. Pencil and piece of paper out. So I'll give you an example and then you guys can do it on your own. So positive and negative, a way technology is positive in your life and a way technology is negative in your life. So yesterday I was up in the Bay Area, all right? And we're driving into the city and, uh, and we need to figure out, okay, where are we going to eat for dinner? Because we were going to go see a concert last night. We went and saw a concert and then we drove home last night, all right? And so we have to figure out where we're going to go for dinner. It's me, my wife, and my parents in the car. And in the old days, what you do is you just kind of like, well, we just go to where the concert's going to be. We park, or we'd ask somebody, hey, is there a good place to eat around here? You know, we just find a restaurant, and then we just eat there. And it might be good or it might not be good, right? Well, now it's like we're driving in. It's like, well, let's find a restaurant, you know, where, where we're going to eat. So I start looking on Yelp, you know, and it's like, oh, what directions do we need? So I go over to the maps, and I, I start finding the directions for how to get in the city. Okay, take this off ramp, that off ramp. Okay, now what ratings are there in the restaurants? We're, you know, I'm just like looking through all this data and information. And then my mom's like, how do you do that? Now I'm teaching my mom, go here, go, you know, with the iPhones. And it's just like kind of chaotic to me, you know? Like in the old days, I'd just be enjoying the ride. It'd be an adventure. We wouldn't know where we were going, right? It's like we'd be parking somewhere near where the concert's going to be. We'd look for a restaurant, we'd find one. It might be good, it might be bad. But, you know, I'd be enjoying the view, the scenery, the city, not trying to find directions, not multitasking. So that was kind of a negative for me, like having to do all that tech stuff and then teach my mom how to do it on her iPhone. All right, I was using my wife's iPhone, not mine, because I don't have one. Just so you guys are like, I thought you didn't have an iPhone. Yeah? So that's kind of a negative. A positive was that, oh, we found an amazing restaurant, because I had like four and a half stars on Yelp, you know? And, and we were able to make reservations right from our phone. You know, on like reserve a table or whatever it was that's connected to Yelp. Oh, 545, we're in. We were able to get right there, not one wrong turn. Route us around traffic. Doom, doom, left, right, left, right, park. Walk right in. It's like we're rock stars, it's like we're the president. Oh, Mr. McLeod, you got the 545. Come on in. We have your table ready for you. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, that was positive, right? Great restaurant, reservations, knew we're exactly where we're going. So it's got the positives and the negatives, right? So it could take us away from our experience. Ah, I don't get to enjoy the city, the drive. It's kind of frantic, but it also kind of contributed to my experience. So just think about what are a positive and a negative in your life, the way technology has impacted you. Try to come up with a concrete example. Go ahead and just make a note about that. You don't have to write the whole story. Just say driving into SF, you know, yelping, and then great restaurant. 
That would be the, the negative would be driving in yelping, the positive would be gray restaurant. So just make a note of that. Go. All right, so uh, you guys need our minute or are you ready? How many people need our minute? Raise your hand. Okay, so you know this routine by now. You're going to say, hello, group. My name is Todd, and here's the way technology has been positive or negative for me. Each person take about a minute or two to share, and then the next person share. So go ahead and uh, reintroduce yourselves and communicate with each other. All right, so cool. Did anybody have, like, did anybody hear from somebody else? You don't have to say who they were. A uh, really great positive or a really interesting negative that, oh, wow, that's really, that's funny. Or, oh, that, oh, I didn't think of that. Anybody hear that from somebody else within your group and maybe want to share it with the rest of us? I'd love to hear it because I just think it's interesting. Anybody? I've, I've shared, like, as far as um, in a group, like, nowadays with technology, like, yeah. I have, like, I don't know if you guys have seen, like, a little credit card thing that you slide your credit card through your phone. Yeah. I mean, that is just wild to me because, I mean, it's possible in some ways, but then also it's negative because you're a person like you get stolen so quick. Where you oh, you slide the card through your phone? Yeah. It's it attaches to your phone? Yeah. Like at the it. iPhone store? Yeah. At the Apple store? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little, you put it inside like your um, headphone card. Yeah. And they usually be for merchants, but now they yeah. have it to where you can take your card and slide it you pay for something online with your credit card and you slide yeah. your own and your pays for it through your phone. That is wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great example. And uh, we could we could discuss that. You know, where might that go? What are the positives and negatives of that? What are the upsides and the downsides? That's an yeah. awesome example. Uh, thank you. Anybody else want to share something they heard, not um, your own, something you heard from somebody else? For the group, like someone said that. It's great how like it's positive that like information is so easily accessible that there's so much out there, but then that's bad too because it's like you don't know what's right and what's wrong because there's so much out there that you it's harder to like find credible sources and stuff like that. Oh, I love that. That was such a great point, man. You know, so hey, we got more information than ever, and uh, what information is true? What's true? Right? That's like my favorite question. What's the truth? What is the truth? Right? What is the truth? You know, like, so is it true information? Is it not true? And, and also, there's so much information. You know, the old days used to be, can I learn more about a subject? Now today, it's like, you know, which subject do I want to learn about? You know, you could just, like, unlimited possibilities. And sociologists, when they've studied this, too many choices actually make people discontent. Give people two choices, three choices, it gives them a better quality of life because then they have the opportunity to be red, blue, or green or whatever, Right? But if you give them the whole rainbow, they just short circuit. <laughs> and that's kind of like the cereal selection. It's like a little too much at the grocery store, right? It's like, I don't know which one to choose. I'm just going to go home without buying anything. But if there's only three, I can make a choice between three. All right, so too much information can lead to discontent. So that's a great one. Thanks for sharing it. You got yeah, one? Every time I go to John Jones, it's so annoying because I don't know what I'm going to get because it's filled. And I go order for me. So I've the, for the, cash, the cashier guy order for me every yeah. single time. I never order my own John district. I like that. There's a TV show guy I like to watch sometimes, Anthony Bourdain. Anybody ever watch him? Yeah. yeah, and like, so sometimes he'll go into a restaurant and just, you know, tell the chef, hey, you're the chef, you know. What's good? What, what, what are you good at? Make me what your specialties are. Yeah, I like that. Uh, anybody else have one more that they want to share? Just one more that they heard from somebody else, which was cool, either great positive or really interesting negative. All right, cool. Well, thank you for the ones you shared. And kind of just what we're doing here is an antithesis in some ways of technology. I mean, technology does connect us, but it also divides us, right? So it's a tool. How do we use it for good or bad? Or is, are we using it or is it using us? But a lot of times technology can remove us from people. So just we're taking a few minutes, you know, each class this first week or two. And, you know, we'll see how it goes throughout the rest of the semester maybe to like not use technology but to use old technology just like our mouths and our ears and talking to people and learning from one another because both are important and also somebody did mention that it's making us more lazier and because nowadays you feel like i mean even taking out the trash i remember when, like back in the day you got the you see people working by taking the trash they're trapped outside and they have to come and dump it in the 
And now they have a machine that automatically fixes yeah. my job, so they can allow people to put everything into like robots. Yeah. Like, 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 like yeah. Well. Yeah. Right. So bad. Yeah. So you know, is technology making us lazier or more entitled, or we don't want to do the hard work? You know, it's like interesting. Is it removing us from our environment? We work in cubicles now, behind little things. You know, we go sit in our cubicle and we type at our computer in the air conditioned office. And it's like for the history of humanity, we've lived out so outdoors in the elements. And now we're in this little air-conditioned, environmentally controlled office behind a cubicle getting angry because somebody just sent us an email, you know? And it's like, really what we need to do is run really hard after a, bu after a buffalo and jab a spear into its side, you know? Or, you know, catch our meat, right, or whatever. I mean, that's kind of the way we've been. So kind of interesting. You know, it used to be garbage men riding on the back of garbage trucks. Now it's just a single driver and the robot arm goes out. Pretty soon the garbage trucks will just be robot drivers. Yeah. Even like the sweeper, I've seen a more than in the commercials where it's like a little sweeper and a mop the floor. It's where you just put yeah. the thing and just all your. Yeah. But you know what? So I mean, let's take now this mop this thing. Yeah. I'll do those. But still, you yeah. know, it's like, man, it's like, come on. Me, you know, so George Jetson. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you for sharing that last one. All right. Uh, I passed out a little flyer for you guys. It's just something that's going on here on campus, which I thought it'd be really nice for you to know about. And on the back, since I had a white page paper, I uh, just put a couple of quotes that I like. So you can read those quotes in your own, own time. And uh, just take a look at that front page right now, where it's study abroad, Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. And uh, so if you're watching this video, uh, May, you know, I don't know when you're watching it, but if it's not May 22nd, 2013 yet, because on May 22nd, 2013, so at the end of this school year, there is going to be a study abroad opportunity. You can see the dates there. It's when the semester ends for a couple of weeks. And you can go to Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia with a couple of teachers here. Or you get college credit. And you can get in touch with these. It would be an amazing experience. It's an amazing place to see. I've been to Vietnam and Cambodia. And they're amazing. And their, their economy is in transition. And they're going to be very different in five years and ten years. Five years, ten years ago, they were still riding bicycles. Now everybody's on scooters in Vietnam, right? Five or ten more years, there'll be cars, maybe. You know, so it's truly mind-blowing, you know? Some people I know, sometimes I ask my class, how many of you have never even been out of Fresno and I'll get hands? And there might be a few of you in here. And it's a real great educational opportunity being provided by the school to go over and visit a foreign culture and just see how other people live, because there's more than one way to do it. Right? Completely different cultures. In the East, the East is mind-blowing. The way, you know, things are just different over there. Some of you maybe have Southeast Asian relatives. Uh, so uh, there's this great opportunity. Uh, you could talk to the teachers there. You could call John Cho. I talked to Victor Yang today. Give either of them a call. Say, hey, I'm interested. How do I get involved? And it's like a club. You'll get to get in a group of students here on campus. You guys will do some fundraising together. They'll, they'll find some money, some grant money to help you pay for it. You'll be able to raise some of the money. I don't know what they'll do, car washes or whatever. And then you might need to come up with a little bit of, you probably will need to come up with some money on your own. You have to get your passport in order and all that stuff. So if you're going to do it, you really want to make sure you get on it this fall and get in touch with them. I think it'd be... Uh, it, I can't recommend it strongly enough. And you also get college credit. So, great opportunity. And a hand what question. I don't know what the price is. So, you got to talk to John and Victor. John, and John, and John Cho is an amazing guy. Great teacher. So, you'll, 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 have a, you'll have a good time. You can look his rating up, of course. I'll rate my professors. So we just looked at the pluses and minuses of technology. Anybody have any questions about that, the study abroad deal? Yeah, let's hear it. What's your question? Uh, how long would it be like, if you go to study abroad? Like, just these days? Or? Yeah, the trip is just May 22nd through June 5th, so I think that's about two weeks. Oh, okay. I don't know. We could look at the calendar. May... 22nd would be one week, two weeks, two weeks exactly. So 14 days. Do you but, have to pass now? Or huh? If you're interested, do you have to contact? Yeah, you want to contact them in the next week or mm -hmm. for sure. Just call them up and say, hey, 
my teacher, Todd McLeod, really talked this up in class. I'm interested in learning more and getting involved. You know, I'm learning about the costs and, you know, what I need to do. And, and if you're a little sticker shocked at the price, oh, you got to come up with a thousand bucks on your own. Like, don't let that blow you out of the water originally. But, uh, but you know, just go meet with them, start learning more, and see what you could do to, to earn that money between now and then. Because if you earn like a hundred bucks a month between now and then, that's, you know, got to be eight hundred bucks. So that's only $25 a week. That's less than five bucks a day. Find a job somewhere, <laughs> earn a little money. All right, so uh, just a lot more information to share with you, kind of about computers. Uh, information revolution. So this idea of an information revolution. How many people have heard of the concept of the industrial age, right? Industrial age. What's the industrial age? Yeah, so the industrial age is kind of like, you know, there's factories and things like that. And, you know, mass production and the assembly line and Henry Ford, right? That's the industrial age. And there's different ages throughout, you know, the history of humanity. So we've got like, you know, I don't know. I'm not a historian, so Renaissance would be another time period, you know, but different ages characterized by different things. And, uh, sorry, wrong slide. Um, so right now, some people say, hey, we're entering a new age, and it's the information age. We're leaving the industrial age, and we're entering the information age. And right now, we're actually in an information revolution. So you might not, it might not seem like it, because you don't see people out in the street, like, protesting and burning things and marching with their fists up. Right? But hey, we're in the middle of a revolution. It's a huge turning point in the history of humanity, an information revolution. And the way things used to be done and the way things are going to be done, they're changing. And you already see that, the way Obama got elected, right? The way people in foreign cultures or even in our own culture respond to events. You know, like in Syria, I hear that students were using their cell phones to take out snipers. They would somehow take pictures and triangulate the location of a sniper, take pictures of where the sniper's at, that triangulate the location, and they'd send in to other people and they'd be able to take out, uh, it's just something I heard somewhere, right? And medical care, right? Responding instead of using the normal system because people, students who are wounded, were getting sent to the hospital where they just disappear. You know, so they created their own system because they were all networked and connected in. The government was working in the hospital and they would take the people and take them out and kill them acting as doctors. Oh, yeah, the government would come in the hospital, they would act like they're doctors, they're they're like they're they're doctors they're and they'd take them out and then they'd shoot them in the head. Yeah. So, you know, they had to come up with another system as opposed to using the current <coughs> response system. And they were able to do that with all this social media. And uh, so, you know, the way people do things is different. The way we used to do things, right, before computers and after, I don't know, what would the D be? I came up with something. Here are my notes. All digital. Before computers, all digital. Before computers, we used a typewriter. Now that it's all digital, we're processor. We used to use filing cabinets. Now we use databases. Mail used to be sent via trucks. Now we send email. Goods used to be bought at a store. Now we buy them online, right? We uh, used to pay for things with cash. You know, now we pay for them with credit cards. Uh, bills used to be paid via the mail. Now we pay electronically. Sign on to Union Bank, right? We used to have phone booths. You know, I don't know. Are there still phone booths? Phones here at City College? Are there pay phones? Yeah, Try to find a payphone, you know? Like, I was the other day, I was at, El, I was at Casa de Fruta. I'm like, do you guys have a payphone? They're like, no. I was like, I need to call somebody. I had to go over to somebody the cell phone. Say, hey, man, I'll give you a buck if I could use your cell phone, because I don't have a cell phone, right? And he's like, okay, keep your dollar. <laughs> I was like, thanks, right? And so I made my call and <laughs> continued on. There was no payphone. You should really buy a cell phone. Huh? You should really buy a cell phone. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. I feel kind of, like, stubborn. I'll eventually will, probably. When we have a kid, I'll probably be like, all right, I gotta get a phone. You see, the odds that you're still trying to find a payphone in 2012. I don't, why do I feel embarrassed about that? <laughs> I started to blush. I to put you on the spot, but I no, put me on the spot. That's fine. But I am old school, dude. I was born in 71, and things are different now. And so, you know, the world is really different. The way we used to do things in the industrial age, 
back in the day with like gears and grease and steam engines and sweatshops and assembly line. A lot of that's still going on, obviously, right? We still manufacture a lot of crap, or China does. And, uh, you know, but the way, the way things we do them now, completely different, right? Just different in so many ways. And you guys have grown up with it, so you might not see it. You're like, oh, it's always been like that. Right? Most of you in here are probably grown up with that. But it's just like, let's take a moment and recognize like, wow, what a big shift this is. Like, humanity used to be going this way, and now we're making a hard right turn, you know? And there have been a couple of moments in the history of humanity where that has happened, right? There's this thing called the Neolithic Revolution, where humans went from being hunters and gatherers to kind of settling down and being farmers. They stopped being nomadic, and they, they, they settled, right? They created little villages, tribes, more so, and they started farming, and the plow came along, so one person could plow, make enough food for a couple of people, and the other person could be a blacksmith or whatever, you know. So that was the Neolithic Revolution. And then we've actually experienced the information revolution before with the printing press in Gutenberg. So Gutenberg created the printing press, and before that, all books had to be written by hand. I didn't tell you this already? No. Cool. And, and, uh, and then after that, you could just, you know, print books. And so knowledge became more widely available. It wasn't just, you know, a few people who had access to information and books. And how did that change uh, humanity? Within 200 years, you had the Renaissance and the Scientific Revolution. After the first information revolution, within 200 years, you had the Renaissance and the Scientific Revolution. So some historians say that the Renaissance and the Scientific Revolution were uh, really strongly influenced, you know, or, you know, caused, right, but not completely caused, but a strong contributor to those arising was the printing press, you know, and the first information revolution. There's a flourishing in the sciences and there's a flourishing in the arts, right? So now that we're in a second information revolution, you know, how is that, how is that going to change humanity? And the information revolution that's occurring today, like, how much more significant is it and widespread where anybody can publish anything to everyone. Anybody can publish anything to everyone, right? So the, the most private place in the entire world, your bedroom, can now be the place where you take center stage in front of the entire world, the spotlight shines down on you, and the whole world watches you, right? For four and a half minutes, do your best impersonation of Darth Maul, you know, in Star Wars, right? And then you have six billion people watching you, right? Okay, so it's good for a little humor. Or you become bus uncle, or you become, you know, like whoever who is sharing knowledge with the world. You become the free hugs dude, or you become the whatever the current meme is, you know? Share anything with anyone. So the most private place in the world can suddenly be the most public place in the world. From the privacy of your bedroom, you can record a song, and before you know it, you know, you're a rock star, and people in the Philippines are imitating your dancing. True story, right? And then you almost win an Emmy, and you're like 18, and you just made a music song with your friends on your computer. You know, I can't remember the song. Anybody know the song I'm talking about? Yeah. We'll, we'll see a video about that at some point, everything I just talked about. So it's like amazing. Right? It's amazing. And how's that information revolution, the second information revolution, because we're in the second information revolution, how's that going to change humanity? Hopefully for the better. And, uh, you know, I think for the better, it's always a struggle between wisdom and ignorance. The people in power wanting to maintain power and the populace, you know, wanting a more equal distribution of uh, resources. But we'll see how, we'll see how it goes. Because there are forces at work. Like, there's this thing called net neutrality, right? And there, there are some companies want to say, you know, not everybody should have equal access to the web providing content, you know? And uh, to get better access as a company, you, you pay AT&T or the people who own the, the backbone of the internet large amounts of money. And then if you're a startup, no, you get the slow lane. So there's forces that work like that, right? Which could just change things. So... We're coming out of the Industrial Revolution, right, which is very mass production, right, uniform, linear, start point, end point, like an assembly line. You think about a factory, right, it's very linear. There's a start point, end point, you go in one, uh, people apply 
the same procedures to every unit, and then you come out the other side, right? And, uh, and it's uh, kind of like that in here. That's the way the educational system is in here. You go in at the start point, people apply procedures to you, you have to do certain things, right? We evaluate, we grade the quality of this, this product, unit, student number 417962, you know, and then you come out the other side and we give you a diploma which lists what grades you got and then you show that to people and you say this is the quality of the product that I am after going through the linear assembly line which we call college, university, right? And you show that to people and you try to get a job. So that's a real reflection of the Industrial Revolution. This classroom, right, very linear. One person applying some procedure to all of the units. You know, the classroom educational system is actually a reflection of the Industrial Revolution. Education was created to, educational systems were created so that we could train workers. You know, we could have a skilled workforce. You know, so how is the educational system going to change now that we're entering a different age? Because the age we're in determines what our society looks like. The industrial age, very linear, assembly line, start point, end point. The information age, very nonlinear. You don't start at the internet and begin at the beginning and then read it to the end and then close it and say, oh, that was a good read. You know, you, re you go look for what you want, you read it, you go off on another subject, and you started out reading about history, and before you know it, you're reading about biology and genetic mutations, because you kind of went all over, nonlinear, right? But how's that going to be different in the future, you know? The best teacher teaching the, you know, why not just take the best teachers teaching the best classes, instead of just taking me at City College? Why not just have the very best teacher of computer concepts teach it to everyone, or the best five, so you have a little variety, and you just take it online? So how will the educational system change, right? How will our cities change? How will our cities change? Like, there's mass production right there, right? All those automobiles got produced, mass consumption, mass production, mass pollution, right? How, how, how will our cities change? People migrated the cities for work. Now you could telecommute, telecommuting. You don't have to go into the city. You work at, screw that, we don't want to build an office building, it costs a lot of money. You work from your house and just log on, and when we have meetings, we'll all just like Google chat, get together, video chat, and we can see how much you're working. You know, we know when you're working, we, could, we, we see when you're logged in, and we see your results. You know, you're bringing in enough revenue, enough sales, good, you're, we're going to keep you employed. You're covering your salary. You're not? Well, we'll give you a little training, if that doesn't work out, we're going to send you packing. <laughs> Right? It's telecommuting, working from home. You know, my wife works for a company in the Bay Area, lives here in Fresno. You know, and she has meetings all day long on her computer with people all around the world. Cool. So maybe there'll be less people living in cities, less people commuting, you know? So how will the world change? Information revolution effects. Uh, you know, the information revolution is much more nonlinear, it's much more collaborative, you know, and it's disruptive to the way things are right now, it's disruptive to technology. So that's kind of like the, the gist about information revolution. Pretty amazing, yeah? So it's like, you know, the first thing, tech is a tool, are we using it, is it using us? Second big thing, hey, we're in the middle of the information revolution. And it's really changing the way we do things. And we don't always notice those two things. So just taking a moment to kind of like, hey, look at these two things that are going on. Like society is really changing. Google, YouTube, Facebook, Yahoo, eBay, PayPal, Amazon, none of that existed 12, 15 years ago. 15 years ago now. Time goes by. But 15 years is a drop in a bucket compared to the history of humanity. Right? Fifteen years is nothing. What's the next big? What's the next big thing? Has it all been invented already? Has it all already been invented? What's the next Facebook? What's the next Google? What's the next YouTube? YouTube was only like 2005, 2006, not that long ago, right? What's the next one? Speaking of um, like cars, also like how technology changes, like how that battery operated cars, so we don't put dash, just charge the battery up and. Yeah, man, like even even like energy, how are we going to do energy different? Is the petroleum age slash industrial age, are we going to get away from petroleum products, you know, and find some other way to 
do energy and electric cars and solar or whatever, you know. Amazing, amazing stuff. All right. So uh, anybody have any thoughts or comments about all that? How many people kind of like, wow, that's kind of cool. I never really knew all that stuff. Let me see your hands. How many people are like, yeah, I've heard this stuff before. I kind of knew about it already. It's amazing, but who cares? Anybody ever seen that video, everything's amazing, but nobody's happy? No, I'll show you that in the class. But before that, I'll show you this one. All right. This is a guy, this is a TED Talk, and uh, kind of talking about, um, you know, kind of how the world's changing and different and amazing, or something like that. I watched it this last couple of days, and I thought, I need to show this to you guys. Anybody not want to see it? Anybody feel like we've seen too many videos? Want to hear me talk some more instead? Hear somebody else talk. All right, hit the lights, please. Isn't that awesome or what? Hit the back switch there, please. How many people just found that absolutely inspiring? I mean, in addition to me. Yeah, me too. You know, like, wow. So, you know, technology can be used for, for bad, and it can be used for huge pluses and huge upside. So you guys have heard me rant a little bit about it's a tool. How are we going to use it? Is it negative? Is it using us? Gosh, it's almost led to the end of humanity in a few cases, right? Just because somebody left a stupid training tape in. And it could also be the savior of humanity, right? I mean, you know, the changes that are going on, huge changes, huge changes, gigantic. So it's like, you know, for me, a huge part of the foundation, some of two of the most important things, you know, just seeing the stuff that we've been talking about last week and the beginning of this week. So I could teach you a lot of, you know, facts. I could teach you a lot of things about clicking, how to use this and how to use that. And you'll learn some of that in this class. But more importantly to me, it's like seeing this bigger picture, you know, like giving you guys some wisdom about it all, letting you see the whole forest instead of getting down all into the micro details and looking at each little tree and how's this click work and how's that click work. Like, look at the big picture. And if this class kind of sounds a little bit philosophical, it starts out a little philosophical, and I, I do trend that way, right, the philosophy of this class, you know, technology for me at its heart is philosophical. You know, it's about looking at the way things are being done and asking, is there some other way it could be done? Do we have to keep doing things the way they've always been done? Is there a new way to do it? Why are we doing it like this? Is it good or bad? How can it be used for the benefit of mankind? You know, those are the big ones. I think that's a great talk. If you're so inspired, share that to people you know. Put it on Facebook, you know, or... Uh, tell your roommates about it. Show it to your significant other. And watch it again. You'll get something new out of it. You watch it a second time. Anybody have any thoughts or reflections on it? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, turn our computers on. If you did not bring a headset of some kind, come up here and grab one out of this box. Turn your computers on, come up and grab a headset out of this box if you did not bring one. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead and take off. I can only give you credit if you're here for the whole class, save for 10 minutes. So if you're able to stay until 540, give you credit. But otherwise, uh, it's an absence. It's no big thing. You got, a lot, you got 36 classes to come to, or 34 classes throughout the semester. You miss one, not going to impact your grade hugely. So, uh, you know, 
but that's your call. No, no bad blood. I don't think any worse for you. It's like great. Take care of family. That's fantastic. But also make sure you're trying to be in class as much as you can so you can get those points. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, see ya. All right, starting up your computer. So this is new for me, and change is hard. Change is hard, right? I want things to stay the same. I don't want them to change. I don't want to have to figure out how to do things differently. I've always been doing them this way. I don't know, what will it be like if I do things differently? Maybe it will suck. But you know what, if you keep doing things the exact same way and change is already occurring, the way you, you've been doing it, maybe it worked a few years ago, starts to suck now, right? You gotta change, you gotta keep up with the times. So I don't know how this is gonna work. Maybe it's gonna suck, maybe it's gonna be the same, maybe it's gonna be better. But what I'm doing is building up to say, I'm teaching my class in a different way. Oops, yep, that's where I wanna be. And in the past, I used to go through each assignment with each of you and show each of you, all, all of you at the same time, I used to show all of you at the same time how to do it. And if you already knew how to do it, well, that's too bad. You had to sit there and watch with everybody else at the same time, right? And so the way I'm doing it differently now is that uh, in assignments here, I've got all the lectures, all the videos already there. So I want you guys, for the next 30 minutes, we're gonna work on assignments, okay? And if you already know, you just read it. Upload a photo of yourself with your name on the picture. Okay, that's self-explanatory. If you already know how to do it, do it. What if you don't have a picture on there? Or if you don't have a picture, how do you go find a picture? Well, then you might wanna say, oh, let me watch this video to see how to do it. So your picture assignment, we need to upload a photo of yourself with right. your name, and uh, then I can click on photos. And I could just find a photo of myself that I like. So here's one right there. And try to find a photo where I could see who you are because with your name on it and with your face where I could see it, then uh, that helps me learn uh, the names of people in the class. So I set those in my computer and they just run on my screensaver as kind of flashcards. And uh, that way it helps me figure out who you are. So I'm gonna right click uh, this picture and choose save image as. Okay, so you guys can get what I'm getting at. Watch the video if you need it. And uh, if you don't, just do the assignment. And uh, if you need help, because you're stuck, the video doesn't get it for you, and, or you don't understand something, or you have a question that's beyond it, then you raise your hand, I come help you out. What's going on? Do you care if you're on Windows or Mac? I don't care what side you're on, Windows or Mac, whatever you feel good with. So uh, just start working through some of these assignments. Let's see how far we get. So if you already done the first three, jump down to some of the next ones. Okay? So we got 30 minutes, let's play.